Welcome to another episode of The Lift. I'm so glad y'all have been sticking with us throughout the duration of our broadcast. Now, I know for the people who count, it's only week number three, but still, y'all still with us, and for that, we are appreciative. Thank you for joining us. As we've said before, whether you're new or coming in for the first time, The Lift is a new initiative by the Houston Fund for Social Justice and Economic Equity. And as I said earlier, because we found we're going to go to nicknames, okay? So it's HEF. So it's a new initiative for HEF where our one aim is literally that, to lift. To lift this community, our listening audience, with information that is empowering, motivating, and inspiring. Now here's a part of what inspires me every day. Well, I don't really talk to them every day, but they're on my team every day. What inspires me is the people that I get to serve with. And so I want to introduce you real quickly to one of our team members who's here today. Tracy, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, I am Tracy Smith. I am the fund development so you got it. Go on. So she I, nerve, she don't be on the air all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I do either, but anywho, go on. We're going to try one more time, Jim Rowe. Tracy, go ahead and introduce yourself. I am Tracy Smith. <laughs> I am the Fund Development Support Specialist. Excellent, XCC. This is her first go round. Y'all know I'm a veteran now because I've been on here three whole times. But anywho, <laughs> Tracy's joining us today. Thanks for being here, Tracy. She is a fund development support support uh, specialist. And for those of you who are listening, that ought to be pretty important because fund development support basically means she's here with the org um, with efforts to help raise money for the work that we do here. And then also joining us is what I would say a piece of my sanity. Miriam, will you introduce yourself today? Hello, I am Miriam Walker, and I am the Administrative Coordinator with the Houston Equity Fund. And she has to do a whole lot of coordinating, and perhaps you can even catch that over the airwaves. Our personalities be on opposite ends of the spectrum. She is good for balancing my extra, okay? So that's Miriam. She helps to coordinate, and while that may seem like just a regular part of any organization, Miriam helps to do that in a team that is mostly virtual, and so trying to keep schedules and needs and locations and times and all of that running smoothly so that as we serve you all, that can be an, a, a, an efficient process is pretty critical. So thank you both for being here today, for being on the broadcast. They Neither one of them just run to be in front of cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so um, y'all work with me as I work with them. They like y'all and everything. They just don't want to talk to y'all no long, 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 long time. It ain't what they do, and I got mad respect for it. So anyhow. <laughs> Oh, this may be the shortest one. Y'all may have to. Y'all may. Y'all may be able to go get lunch. <laughs> so we're gonna get to it. All right. So um, just in general, though, what I will say is that they are both very passionate to what this organization is about. So I will allow them um, whole space for them to just share a bit about why small businesses and nonprofit organizations matter to them personally. Because you can't serve this vision without having some sense, some personal commitment to what we're about. Go ahead, Tracy. Absolutely. The work that small businesses and nonprofits are doing here in the Houston area is tremendous. And oftentimes, organizations and small businesses just simply need a helping hand. Whether that helping hand is funding or it comes through training or technical assistance. And sometimes that is the one thing that they are missing to take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, it is very rewarding uh, to be able to do this work uh, mm -hmm. in my community, in my city. Um, Here you go. See them people that made it the <laughs> natives. Between her and Michelle that y'all heard last week, they not going to let us make it without saying that my city stuff. Like they done built it from the ground up. But why is this your city, Tracy? It why is, do you say that with your whole heart, like my city? <laughs> it is my city. I am a native Houstonian. I uh, grew up on the north side of Houston, yeah. uh, attended high school in the North Forest Independent School District. Mm -hmm. And so that comes with a lot of pride for me. And to be able to do this work, to see my community get that leg up uh, from the Houston Equity Fund is extremely important yeah. and rewarding. Yeah. And before we go to Miriam, we're going to let Miriam get warmed up and ready so she'll know we're coming. But Tracy, even when you just particularly single out or highlight the school district where you uh, uh, went to school mm -hmm. and just being in the whole education sector, we know that oftentimes the inequity in resources was a huge thing there. So I can imagine that even in doing this work, you can you have real-time, real-life examples of spaces where the books were raggedy compared to what other people had, Absolutely. the buses. Yeah, you want to speak a bit to why this, this is real-time stuff for you? I, I mentioned the North Forest Independent School District because it is 
it was, I should was. say, um, in a low income area. Mm -hmm. And so the success rate or those who think the success rate for someone coming out of that area um, would be low. And mm -hmm. so um, I am walking proof yeah. uh, that we are succeeding yes. uh, in those areas of low poverty and being able to help someone uh, come out of that is extremely important to me. Sometimes all we need to do is just leave the door open yes, uh, so that the next person can walk through. We yes. need to extend a hand to help them up. And yes. so being able to do that and knowing that I came from an area uh, yeah. that had a low uh, rate, uh, success rate for those who yes. grew up there. Um, it's important to me to yes. be able to, to help others come up. Yes, that will take me down a whole digression road where I love to say I don't even believe in at-risk students and at-risk people. Like, you're proof. You, it's quality people. It's not the person that's at risk. It's the situation. It's the situation. Change the situation, and you give the person a chance, right? So thank you for sharing that. Yes. Um, and then you, Miriam, all the way from suburbia, right? From suburbia. <laughs> Central South Park. <laughs> <laughs> right? Central South Park. And I highlight that, yes, because South Park is certainly within the areas that we serve but for you why would um, this this work with small businesses and nonprofit non organizations register as needed and, and important well when I think about small business to me it's family mm. it's not like the big box businesses that support so many but you're directly affecting families and generational wealth and legacy within families so when I'm supporting a small business I know I'm helping to build a family Yes. Do you have examples of knowing, like in your area in South Park, walking into like a corner store or something and knowing, man, I saw like grandfather work here and now son is working here. And now do you do you actually see those types of establishments within the South Park area? Well, I have experienced that because actually I walked to school. Mm. And so my mother was a person that really didn't want us eating junk food so we would sneak in those stores and get <laughs> now and laters and cheese doodles and things like that th mm -hmm. before we got home so she would know we yes. were eating them but you know over time uh, those places have disappeared yeah and we even had a one of the bigger businesses that actually was in the neighborhood for a long time i don't know if i can say names but it actually burned down within the past two years or so and it really was the only place that a lot of the people in the neighborhood could even go for groceries mm -hmm. and so it's kind of been even now you know we'd hoped that they would rebuild it because a lot of the people in the community don't even drive and they would rely on those smaller stores to be able to just simply even get their daily essentials. Yeah, I think that's important to highlight. It's a sobering thought, and then it just happens that it's Black History Month. And I don't know if when this airs, it's Black History Month uh, officially, but whenever it airs, and you were talking about it, it's Black History, period, mm -hmm. right? This mm -hmm. idea that even just for us in today's world, real time, we're saying what was, meaning mm -hmm. we in our lifetimes have watched stores that were once on a block no mm -hmm. longer exist, districts right. that once existed no longer exist. Mm -hmm. And, and it is literally not because of the quality of the person, not because of the quality of the product or services, but because mm -hmm. there, there's gatekeeping. There is right. real gatekeeping that happens as it relates to um, access to resources it's and funding yes. and knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so all the way full circle back, our, our ancestors have done a lot to give us this level up. But in my, in my words, this is our way of marching. This is our mm -hmm. way. We may not have to go sit on a bus and boycott it because many of us don't even use them. Mm -hmm. But this is our way of, of marching and continuing that very meaningful work that says, come on, give us our acre and move yes. 40 acres. Give us half yes. an acre, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is that way of doing that. And so when it comes then to this organization, small businesses, nonprofit organizations, both of you have, have had opportunities to be out out on the tours and to engage hands and feet on the ground, what would you say resonates most for you, does the most for you, or just sticks with you after having visited some of the places that we've gone who've received our grants? For me, it's being able to see how that funding truly impacted their businesses, how they were able to, to take those dollars and really impact change uh, within their business, whether it was making a, a large purchase or 
uh, expanding their operation, being able to hire more people. But we are truly witnessing a growth and change for those businesses. Mm -hmm. yeah. From our vision statement, transformational change. What has it been for you then, Miriam, when you're out and being able to see? Well, what amazes me is the diversity of different types of businesses that yeah, I'm seeing. Never met I mean, there's so many people that have these amazing gifts that that have been maybe unnoticed. Mm -hmm. And this may be the first time that a lot of them are being able to be highlighted in a way. Honestly, I wouldn't know they existed if mm -hmm. I hadn't been a part of this organization. Mm -hmm. But... Some of them, I'm collecting the information. I'm like, yes. even outside of this, I would support them. Yes, and mm -hmm. and I agree, Miriam. Like the the businesses that we get to see, the nonprofit organizations, because we don't mean to leave you out. Like the work mm -hmm. that people are doing out here in this city, hands down, second mm -hmm. to none. I'm gonna do like Michelle and Tracy. This my city. This <laughs> my just proud. She threw up the sign. Like man, it is. And so that then, um, I'll I'll just do this turn as we prepare to pivot. That's the point of the lift is to let you know, to validate, to confirm, to affirm, to let you know that there's a group out here who's intentionally wanting you to know that we see you, we appreciate you, yes. we acknowledge you, we're voting for you, we're rooting for you, we're, we're defending you, and so, and even providing opportunities. So in just a couple of weeks, I would say weeks, who knows when this airs, it could have just have happened. So let me just give you the date, February the 27th, that's when we're getting ready to do our final press conference for the final round of this millions of dollar grant that is it, it is uh, particularly slated for small business owners and nonprofit organization leaders and I know some of you are saying well what's the size of all those details and I'm basically going to tell you just go to the website that's www.houstonequityfund.org and subscribe um, read it. It will be on the home page if we're past February the 27th where you will be able to just read about the grant. There will be informationals that will happen where you can come to those virtually and in person to ask questions about the application. And then there's a, a window of time that you will be allowed to apply. And we do all of that lead up so that by the time it's time to apply, you are fully equipped. You have been lifted. You have been empowered, motivated, and inspired to be successful. Um, if you were speaking to small business owners and nonprofit leaders, Tracy, what would be the one thing that you would want them to know from your heart to theirs or on behalf of the org to their hearts? What would you want them to know? Don't be afraid to apply. Mm -hmm. um, this is an opportunity uh, that does not come around often. Um, mm -hmm. Perhaps it may be a once in a lifetime opportunity. It feels that way, right? And so don't be afraid to uh, complete the process, complete the application. Uh, don't feel like maybe you're not enough or you don't yeah, have what it yeah. takes to be able to qualify for the right. grant, um, go ahead and, and jump and yeah. fill out the application and go through the process. And um, I mean, it's happens. just don't Bet be afraid. You. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Miriam, what would you want to say to our small business owners and nonprofit leaders? Well, kind of bouncing off what Tracy would say, just don't think you're too small. Mm -hmm. Everybody has room for um, growth and you have to see bigger for yourself, and you have to take that step. You take one step, and then it helps you to elevate to the next step. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think, um, and with what they've said, at one, we, we mean that, yeah, with our whole hearts. I think with what they said, it's even bigger than just the business, and it's bigger than the nonprofit org, and it's bigger than this application. If it, with with a with a sense of, of knowing that we're a collective community, we say those message period. Like if you would take what they just said out of the context of just an application process. If I was talking to them or talking to Michelle or talking to Eric who is the broadcasting engineer who's helping us today, I would say that over and over, like to not think that we're too small, to not think that we're not enough, to not think that we're not good enough to weeding ourselves out of opportunities and chances and talking ourselves out of it and sometimes masking that as wisdom or timing but being t being willing to do what you said at the end Tracy like just jump yes just mm -hmm. jump whether whether that's this application or or any other opportunity mm -hmm. where you're having to determine whether your business your consulting, your engineering company, your museum, your anything, your shea butter is as good as anybody else's. It's like, yeah, for all of us. And so long after this moment is over, because it does eventually end as it relates to this grant, 
may the community, the connection, the, the mentality long exist. And before we go, we do have the grants opportunity coming. It will be the third round of this particular grant that is sponsored through Wells Fargo. So shout out to Wells Fargo for that. Shout out again to our board that we've highlighted in the previous two segments for this meaningful work. We have that, but for those of you who may be first time listeners today, we do want to also inform you that we have technical assistance courses. We have classes that people have to pay hundreds of dollars to attend. Mm -hmm. And most of them are on our website, listed already where you can get the virtual links. And because we so respect you and your time, we give you our word on Mary Had a Little Lamb. These <laughs> classes be led by experts. Um, we don't waste your time. They're professional, they're polished. And, and we have the information available to you because long after a grant is over, what you learn, information, education that you get, nobody can take that from you. Yes, people from other cities who, um, who hear about this information, yes, you can come to the classes. Um, the grants are reserved for Houstonians, but yeah, classes information, anybody's welcome. Tune in virtually. Anything else that you'd wanna add about this project, Tracy or Miriam? I mean, to stay engaged, stay plugged into what's happening, uh, take advantage of those uh, technical assistance courses. Um, just kind of echoing what you said, people pay hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars to, to get this information that the Houston Equity Fund is offering for free. And so everyone should take advantage of that. I think that we should always be lifelong learners. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're building a business or a nonprofit organization, there's never too much uh, information that you can receive. And so take advantage of it and stay plugged into what's going on. Yeah, I agree. Miriam? Well, apply, apply, apply. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And, and, apply, and, right? And the only failure is to not take that step. Mm -hmm. Yeah to not try. Mm -hmm. Apply, apply, apply for the grants, and apply, apply, apply for any opportunity that comes your way. So um, as we prepare to wrap up today, I, I would be remiss if I were not to also add, even for our team here, we so endorse small businesses and nonprofit organizations that I want Tracy to share the name of her business and also what services she provides in case someone in our listening audience needs that um, particular service, and then Miriam will do the same. Thank you for that opportunity, the opportunity to do so. Taylor Smith Consulting is the name of my firm, and we provide... Come on, firm! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, firm! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> we provide staffing services as well as operations consulting services. We have offices located throughout Texas and in South Carolina. Awesomeness, awesomeness. And I can stand behind her business, business astuteness. She is a tremendous asset to our team. So if what she trains and provides is similar to what she ex how she executes, you're in good hands. I'm going to stick beside her. What you got, Miriam? <laughs> well, my business is my name, Miriam Walker Collection, and mm -hmm. I am an artist, architect, Labrador architect, uh, artist as well, and I create wearable fine art pieces from beautiful uh, creations from God himself. That's mm -hmm. the download. It's again, Miriam Walker Collections. Mm -hmm. If you just go to the website, you will be inspired by these downloads. I think mm -hmm. Eric over there trying to type it in real fast. <laughs> He's trying to see if this legit. It's, it's Miriam, M-I-R-I-A-M Walker Collections. And, and I do have Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Yeah. And it's Miriam Walker Collection on all platforms yeah it's amazing and a, and a website right and amazing things in the in the shoot for what's to come for her her place of business and the like so thank you both for being here today for being a part of this team that's doing this amazing work in the city of houston and then to all all people who are listening um both small business owners and nonprofit organization leaders. We appreciate you for being a part of the audience today. And then if you don't fall into those categories, just as a person, our message is still the same. Bet on you, believe in you, take your opportunities, do whatever it is that you're up to, knowing that what we offer as a community that has, has been historically excluded or minimized, honey, we done been out here and seen it all. And I, I guarantee yes. you, we are second to none. 
we can sit at the table and hold our own with anybody. So bet on yourselves. And um, we'll see you. We'll see you back out here in these streets real soon. <laughs> Thank you again for tuning into The Lift that is being hosted by the amazing 102.5 FM, produced by the awesome Eric. He my first cousin now. We on first cousin status. <laughs> we keep moving up in our relationship. The awesome Eric, who's who's doing our broadcasting engineering. And thanks to this whole, pro this whole team here for just supporting this initiative through our organization. Appreciate you all for listening. Have a good, safe day.